All right, uh, let's look at another example of using integration to calculate work done by a variable force. So imagine in this situation we have a, uh, a, we have a spring, okay? Uh, so the, the, there's the classic spring problem. So a force of 40 newtons is required to hold a spring that has been stretched from its natural length of 10 centimeters to its length of 15 centimeters. Let's talk about that for a second. So what do I mean by spring, right? We have this coil and there's some type of tension in the coil that it keeps it at a certain length, right? And so we might refer to this as its natural length. If no outside forces are acting on the spring, how long does it want to be? Now in this example, we say that its natural length is 10 centimeters, all right? But there is a force being exerted on our spring and so it's been stretched out. So it's been elongated because it's been stretched out. And so it's been stretched out to this factor of 15 centimeters. So it's a little bit long. And if you've ever pulled a string out before, so it's been stretched here. If you've ever stretched out a string, uh, a spring of some kind, excuse me, um, you can often feel that there's this force that's pulling the two sides of the spring back together. It wants to return to its equilibrium state. Um, and this, how, how strong that is, depends a lot on the spring. If you pull a slinky out, there's not a lot of force going on there. If you take like a trampoline spring, holy cow, there's a lot of force pulling that thing back together. Um, if you get bored in class and you take apart your pen and you start squeezing it and pulling it apart, the spring there, again, you get a different type of force, right? And so according to Hooke's law uh, from physics, uh, it turns out the force required to hold a spring stretched uh, any distance from its natural length is actually going to be the, the force is going to be directly proportional to the length that you've exerted it, right? So we get this force function f of x equals kx, where x here represents the distance it's stretched beyond its natural length, um, and f of x would be the, be the force going on there. So in the situation we have right now, we it, with the information we have, we know its natural length is 10 centimeters. It's been to stretch it. 15 centimeters, that equates to 40 newtons of force, all right? Um, and so we're going to make, we're going to find the spring constant doing that. Now remember with newtons, newtons, it, newtons, their basic units is going to be a kilogram by meter per second squared. So if you're using newtons with centimeters, you're going to have to switch. You either have to switch to centinewtons or you have to switch your centimeters to meters. So that actually, I, I'm just gonna switch centimeters to meters. That's gonna be sort of the easier approach. Um, divide them by 100, because there's 100 centimeters in a meter there. So you get 0.15 meters, and this is gonna be 0.1 meters. Uh, so it's natural length is 0.1, um, and it's, it's been stretched to 1.5. But we have to also keep track of X is measuring the distance we go beyond its natural length. So in terms of our X coordinate, we have a measurement at the x coordinate 0, 0.05. Because if we go 0 0.05 units past the natural length, that's where this 40 comes into play. So by Hooke's law, f, uh, f of 0 0.05 will equal 40. So that's the observation we have, and then the Hooke's law tells us this will equal k times 0 0.05. Uh, so divide both sides by 0 0.05. We're gonna figure out that the spring constant uh, what did I say, 40 over 0 0.05, uh, that's going to turn out to be one, uh, 800, right? And you don't really have to worry about the units of the spring constant, because with these type of uh, direct variation problems you often see in science, uh, the units are just, for the constant, just whatever makes the units work, right? This distance and the force are related to each other. And so we get the spring constant. Now, be aware, this is not actually the question that was asked. I haven't even read the question. What we've done so far is if we know the force to hold a spring at some distance from its natural length, we can compute this spring constant. We're going to need that. Uh, what we're asked to do is find the work necessary in stretching the spring from 15 centimeters to 18 centimeters. Now, be aware, the first situation was not, we weren't moving the spring out. We're saying it's already stretched and it took 40 newtons to hold it stretched out. Um, but what if it's 15 centimeters and we want to stretch it to 18 centimeters, all right? Well, this is where the, this is where integration comes into play here, because what we know is that the work 
the work to stretch it from 15 centimeters, or I'm gonna write this in meters still, 0.15, to 1.8 here. Uh, the work to stretch it from 0.15, oh, I'm sorry, uh, we need to do this from the natural length. This is a common mistake here. So 15 centimeters actually is 0 0.05 in our units for X. And then the 18 centimeters will be 0.8 meters beyond the natural length. So we want to integrate the force function to get work right here. And the force functions will be figured out a moment ago. Uh, what was it? It was 800 times X dx. And so what we've seen before is if we can integrate this function with respect to X, that'll give us the, the work to do. And so this, this is, it's not a variable, all right, the, stretching out the spring is a variable force because the farther and farther and farther you get past the natural length, the harder and harder and harder it is to stretch that spring. Um, so we can't just take, oh, we stretched out three centimeters times by some force or something. We have to integrate this thing. But the integral itself is not too hard to do. Um, just by the power rule, we're going to get 400 x squared going from 0 0.05 2.08. Uh, do make sure your bounds are the right numbers, and there's a little bit of a arithmetic chore going on here, but that's all there's going to be here. We plug in 0 0.08 and 0 0.05 in for x, uh, so we're going to get 0 0.08 squared minus 0 0.05 squared. Uh, 0 0.08 squared, that's going to be 0 0.64, and then we subtract from it 0.25, which was 0 0.05 squared. Uh, their difference is just going to be 0.39. And if you times that by 400, you get about 1.56 joules of work.